Thanks so much for joining me for this very special edition of 15 Minutes. As you can tell, I am not coming to you from St. Gerard Magella Parish, where I normally film these short videos, but rather from a, another really special place, and that is the Seminary of the Immaculate Conception in Huntington. For those who are native to Long Island, you might know about the seminary, and I hope you do. It's a gem not only for us Catholics, but really for all of Long Island. This seminary, a majestic building that sits on over 200 beautiful acres, was founded in the 1920s for the formation and training of priests. And this predates even the, the founding of the Diocese of Rockville Center, which wouldn't happen until 1957. So for a very long time, this was the center of formation and education for those who would serve in Brooklyn, Queens, Nassau, and Suffolk counties, and beyond those regions as well, and even for religious communities. Thousands of men have been trained and ordained from this sacred space. It's uh, no longer serving in that capacity, training men to be priests, but rather has a wide variety of other activities. For one thing, it's the largest retreat and conference center in the tri-state area. It also uh, hosts many, many gatherings for retreats and other spiritual conferences, thousands of people each year. In fact, the group that I'm with right now on retreat is one example of that. It also houses the uh, Office for Diaconate Formation, those men who are studying and training to become deacons and serve in a variety of capacities and parishes throughout our diocese. It also houses um, classrooms that are used in conjunction with St. Joseph's Seminary in Yonkers. Um, this is a satellite campus of that education system. And so there are many people studying for master's degrees and other programs affiliated with St. Joseph's. It also houses the Sacred Heart Institute, which is a tri-diocesan collaborative effort for the ongoing formation of priests and deacons in the Archdiocese of New York, the Diocese of Brooklyn, and our own Diocese of Rockville Center. So this place is very busy and active. I'm here now because for the past few days I was leading a retreat for catechetical leaders in our diocese. These men and women serve as directors of uh, faith formation or directors of religious education or youth ministry in their parishes. And so retreats are really important because it's a time to come away. Come away from the world, come away from the busyness, the to-do lists, the emails and the phone calls, and to simply rest with God a bit, to be recharged, to be regrounded in our identity as Christians, as disciples of Jesus. In fact, in the sixth chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, we're told that Jesus had sent out his disciples in pairs to do what he was doing, to preach and teach and heal. And they're out for some time and then they come back and you can sense the, the excitement and yes, the, the exhaustion of those disciples. And Jesus is watching them and seeing them share stories and tell them about everything they've been doing. And he says, come away and rest a while. Come away. Because he realized they didn't even have time to eat well. They needed to rest and to be with him. That's why it's so important for us to take those breaks from all the craziness of life and to simply rest with God. We need to do this each day for some time. During the week, we, of course, take that break each Sunday to have that time with God and hopefully with family to reconnect and be regrounded. But it's also important on an annual basis to take even just a few days away, again, from all the hecticness, all the busyness, all the to-dos, and to come away and rest with God a bit, to refocus on our mission as disciples. So, it's been my joy to be with this great group of men and women who serve so well in our diocese. This time of year, of course, is one for resting and retreats and vacation. This weekend, of course, we celebrate Independence Day. This Sunday, we recall the founding of our nation. And we think about those figures, those founding fathers, who with great boldness and clarity, and yes, with some trepidation and fear, knowing the risks, forged ahead and said that we are an independent people. And at a great declaration of independence, we reaffirm our commitment to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that all are created equal. It's as challenging an experiment today as it was then, and it is our mission, all of us working together, to fulfill those highest ideals. 
You know, as I think about the founding fathers and, you know, you have some great uh, documentaries and um, Netflix series and other things that have been created to depict those pivotal moments in our nation's history. I'm always reminded of the founding fathers of our Catholic faith. Just a few days ago, we celebrated the feast of St. Irenaeus, a bishop and martyr of the early church. Irenaeus is probably not a household name. We celebrate his feast on June 28th, but he was truly an important figure because among many things he preached about was the unity of the church, having to remain united. And we know that the church, much like our nation, sometimes can get into a little bit of uh, factions and you know, political and religious arguments. Some people believe this, some people believe that. We can sometimes have too much infighting, and we know that for a nation or the church, that's not good. We'll always have disagreements, we'll always have different viewpoints, that's obvious. But we need to refocus on our identity as to who we are and to commit ourselves to having that unifying principle at the foundation of our institutions. So St. Irenaeus is a great model for us. And then, just this past week on June 29th, we celebrated the great solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. Now, the way we think about George Washington and John Adams and Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, these pivotal foundational figures of our nation, well, Peter and Paul are the founding fathers in a sense of our faith. I don't think it's too outlandish to say that after our blessed Lord and our lady, his mother, after them, Peter and Paul are the two most important figures in our Catholic faith. They are the ones to whom Jesus entrusted the mission of the church in a singular way. We recall that scene when Jesus asked the apostles, who do people say that I am? And they respond, well, some think you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead, or one of the prophets. And then he says, well, who do you say that I am? And it's Peter, at that time Simon, who says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The first one to confess Jesus' true identity. And Jesus transforms in that moment and says, you're no longer uh, Simon, you are Peter, Petros, rock in Greek. And upon you, this rock, I will build my church. And we know Peter's story pretty well. He's the story of 10 steps forward, 8 steps back. He was one who had such boldness and zeal and protection and love for Jesus, but then would retreat in selfishness. He said at the Last Supper, Lord, I will go anywhere for you. I will do anything. I will even give my life for you. And then only hours later, he denies even knowing who Jesus was. We think also about Saul, who would become Paul. Saul, like Peter, was a broken person at times. In fact, Saul, a Pharisee, an expert in the Jewish faith, was so angry by this group that was following an itinerant preacher, Jesus of Nazareth, that he would chain them and bring them in and even murder them. He oversaw such persecution of the early church. And we know well that story of how he was making his way to Damascus. He's blinded by this overwhelming light and he hears Jesus speak to him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Notice Jesus says, me, not my church, but me, because Christ and his church are one. You and I, by the waters of baptism, are made members of the body of Christ. This was a true revelation for Saul, and as a result, he changes so dramatically. He takes on a new name, like Simon took on Peter. Saul now becomes Paul. And these two together are really the founding fathers of our faith. They're accompanied by the other apostles and early fathers of the church. Holy men and, yes, holy women who go out and proclaim Jesus, many of whom witness to the shedding of their own blood for the sake of Christ. So as we celebrate our Independence Day this weekend, as we embark on these summer days that are, yes, a bit hotter and more humid than usual, it's a time for us to pause, to stop and reflect, to be refreshed in our identity of who we are and who we're called to be. 
Our nation, please God, will continue to strive to be a place of peace and justice for all people, founded on those great ideals and ever changing and being reshaped to better foster and exhibit those ideals. We too as a church have to do the same, to be reminded of our truest identity as disciples of Jesus, called to take what we've been given, our gifts, our talents, and then to go out and transform the world. Thanks so much for taking this time to be with me. As always, please like and share this video. Please, uh, if you have any questions, fill out the Google Doc below. There's a link right below this video where you can submit your questions and I hope to get to them as soon as possible. I also want to thank the uh, great staff of the Seminary of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, there's also a link to their website where you can see a little bit more about what they do here uh, for our diocese and for Catholics and Christians all around our area. Special word of thanks to them and to all those who serve in our parishes, um, for priests and deacons, directors of religious education, and all those on staff at parishes. Be sure you get some rest this summer to recharge those spiritual batteries to go out and to continue doing the work of God. God bless you all and your families.